So a couple of issues that go in Woodsmith Magazine. Uh, we had a wood turning sharpening article by Jimmy Clues. Uh, but as much as you can read about sharpening, it's something you just have to see and something you have to do, especially when it comes to wood turning tools. So today I wanna to walk you through kind of my setup uh, and I learned a lot of my sharpening from Jimmy. Uh, so a lot of it will follow his article pretty closely. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the sharpening setup. Because as many sharpening jigs as there are for hand tools, there's just as many, if not more, when it comes to turning tools. So starting with the grinder, I have a low speed Rikon grinder here. Uh, it runs at 1750 RPM and that's about perfect for turning tools. Doesn't get the tools too hot, but it doesn't take forever to sharpen either. And looking at wheels, I have one of the white wheels on here that came with the grinder. Uh, it's fairly coarse, it's probably about 120 grit. And then on this side, I have a CBN wheel. And this particular wheel is a 220 grit uh, from Wood Turner Wonders, um, and it's one of their profiled ones. Uh, so the corners, instead of being sharp, uh, like a traditional grinding stone is, uh, they have a small radius on them. And that is to help with sharpening some other, not necessarily wood turning tools, uh, like carving gouges and stuff like that. Um, and I like the CBN wheel. Uh, it cuts fairly quickly, gives you a little bit higher uh, polish than a traditional wheel in my opinion, uh, but they do wear out. So that's just something to think about if you do uh, want to add one. Now, when it comes to mounting the grinder, I have it on a riser block uh, and that's so I can fit my sharpening jigs underneath the wheels. Looking down here, uh, the jig that I use is one of the most common. It's the one-way Wolverine system, uh, and it consists of these two clamp blocks, one on each side of the grinder, and those accept two different tool rests. And the two tool rests that you're going to use uh, when you're sharpening wood turning tools are this adjustable platform over here, and then the V-arm. Now these will cover a lot of the basic turning tool needs uh, with the addition of this guy. And this is the one-way Veragrind jig. Uh, and this is used in tandem with this V-arm uh, to help sharpen the wings on some bowl gouges and spindle gouges. But we'll talk about that in a minute. So looking at our turning tools, let's talk about sharpening some of them. So the first one we'll talk about uh, is this guy. This is a spindle roughing gouge. And this is used uh, to basically turn a square blank round. Now it's important to note that this is only for use in spindles. You don't want to use this on bowls. It's not designed for that. And it can lead to some pretty nasty catches if you do try to do that. Uh, so spindles, spindle roughing gouge. Now we have a couple ways we can sharpen this guy. The first is we can use this angled platform. We can just hold it on the platform at the correct angle. And then we're just going to rotate the tool left and right. And that works pretty well. Uh, however, my preferred method is to use the V-arm. So we're going to swap these guys out. And we'll put the V-arm on the traditional stone. Now it's important that with the spindle roughing gouge, you cannot use the V-arm with the CBN wheel. Uh, as the tool gets shorter as you're sharpening it, it can actually cause it to pinch in this wheel uh, and actually damage the wheel pretty bad. So almost every CBN wheel manufacturer will tell you, do not use a spindle roughing gouge with the V-arm on this. Uh, if you're going to use the CBN wheel uh, to sharpen your spindle roughing gouge, you will have to do so with the angled platform uh, and you just lock that in place. And again, hold the tool flat and roll it. So with the V-arm installed, uh, I can go ahead and set my angle. Now, I don't get terribly caught up on what bevel angle my sharpening or my turning tools are at. Uh, generally, I just keep whatever the manufacturer supplied on there. Uh, most of my tools are from Doug Thompson at Thompson Tools, uh, and I like the grinds he has on there uh, initially, so that's what I stick with. So I will just pull this guy out until the bevel on the spindle roughing gouge is laying flat against the wheel, and then I will lock that V-arm into place. Now, we'll throw some safety glasses on, turn the grinder on, we'll let it get up to speed, and we'll put the tool butt in the V-arm, we'll lower the tool down, and then we'll just roll it left and right.
And taking a look at the bevel, I can see I am sharpening the heel away a little bit, which is okay. We'll just keep going until I see the sparks from the wheel coming inside the flute of the roughing gouge. Once those sparks start traveling inside the flute instead of below it, that's when I know that I'm sharpening right up to that cutting edge. A little bit more. Okay, there we go. So now my bevel is even it looks like the cut pattern the scratch pattern on there is even and on the inside i can feel there's just a hair of a burr uh, inside the flute which is perfect that's what i want i know that edge is sharp okay so spindle roughing gouge is sharp let's go ahead and swap these guys over and we will talk about doing a spindle gouge so i'll put the angle platform back over here and even if i'm not using it i lock it in place so it doesn't wander into the wheel We'll put the V-arm on the CBN, and we'll grab a spindle gouge. Now, for the spindle gouge and bowl gouges, I like to use the very grind jig. Uh, and the way I set this up is with the center screw on the second notch from the bottom. Uh, there's a couple different settings you can have. You can change this arm's position in relation to the tool holder, and that's going to change the angle of the wings. Um, the second notch is where I learned to sharpen, so that's what I keep it at. Now, the other thing we have to set with this is the tool projection. Now, we want to make sure that the tool is protruding out of the end of the jig the same amount every time. And one of the great tips I picked up from Jimmy was to simply use the, the V-cradle to set that. So I butt the very grind jig up against the V-cradle, insert the tool, and then I insert it until the heel of the bevel is even with the end of that V-cradle uh, block, and then I tighten it down. And that gives you a pretty close setup every time. Uh, it's at least close enough for the sharpness I need for the turning I do. Uh, now, we're gonna set the angle of this as well. And we'll do that same way we did the spindle roughing gouge. We will adjust this arm so that the bevel is riding flat on that wheel then we'll lock it in place. Okay, now with this locked in, we can turn it on. And when I sharpen this, I'm going to make a rolling motion uh, from right to left or left to right, uh, whichever direction you prefer. And I'm not only gonna sharpen the tip, but I'm also gonna sharpen the wings a little bit. Uh, I like to have some sharp wings on my detail gouge, on my spindle gouge. Uh, just for a little planing cut, and it helps you get in a little bit tighter areas. Fill the edge, and I can feel that there's a burr in there, so I know that's sharp. Now, there's one other thing I like to do with the spindle gouge. And every couple sharpenings, I will come in and I'll just freehand this, but I'll just grind away the heel. And what that does is it makes the profile from the top of the cutting edge to the bottom of the tool narrower. That way I can reach a little bit better into beads and details uh, and not worry about catching that heel on stuff. There we go, it looks pretty good. So while we have the V-arm set up, let's talk about a bowl gouge. The difference between the bowl gouge and the spindle gouge is that the bowl gouge has a much, much deeper flute. Uh, the spindle gouge is gonna be a little bit shallower. 
And I have bowl gouges here in a couple different sizes, um, but they're all sharpened the same. So we'll do the same thing we did with the spindle gouge. And then we will set the angle again. And the bowl gouge angle will be a little bit of a uh, more obtuse angle than the spindle gouge is. Uh, with a bowl gouge, we want a little bit more edge retention uh, instead of sharpness, if that makes sense. Uh, it's gonna last a little bit longer when we're doing bowls. So I've reset that, and now we'll do the same thing. Okay, there we go. And what you're shooting for on a bowl gouge is a smooth, even profile. You want the transition from the wings to the tip to be nice and smooth. And that's one problem I had when I started sharpening. It took me a long time to understand that there's much more metal here on the wings than there is down at the tip. So as you're grinding, because there's a little bit less metal here and there's less surface contact with the wheel, this is gonna grind much faster. So when I first started sharpening these guys, I was getting a really bad, uh, like a bird's beak profile where I'd have a dip where the wings were meeting the tip. So really what that means is speed up at the tip and go a little bit slower on the wings. And as you're grinding, you can watch that profile and just concentrate on those high areas until you get that nice, smooth, even curve all the way around. You fill the burr and it's gonna be nice and sharp. So another one of my frequently used tools in almost everything I turn is a parting tool. Uh, and this one is deceptively simple to sharpen. Um, we just have uh, two bevels that meet to a point and the point just needs to be sharp. So again, we can either use the platform or the V-arm. Uh, let's start with the V-arm. So same thing here, we're going to set the angle. Lock it in. And we'll turn the grinder on. And then we're just gonna drop the tool in the rest. And touch it on one side, flip it over, touch it on the other. And we're looking for those scratch marks to reach all the way to the tip. There we go. Now the only thing really to watch out for with a parting tool is you wanna make sure that your end stays square, at least on most parting tools. Now there are instances where I'll grind my parting tool at an angle, uh, such as a specialty parting tool for cutting a dovetail for a chuck, uh, but for the most part, with most parting tools, you just wanna keep an eye on that tip, make sure it stays at 90 degrees. So that's using the V-arm. Now you can do the same thing with the platform. You just set it at the appropriate angle, touch it on both sides, keep an eye on the tip, making sure it stays square. So now, let's talk about sharpening a scraper. Scrapers are used usually to clean up tool marks uh, and they work by having a burr on the top edge, very much like a card scraper does uh, for traditional woodworking. So we wanna make sure that we get a good burr off that top side. So to do that, I use the platform and I'll generally use whatever wheel I have on the grinder that is the most coarse. Uh, so in this instance, it's gonna be this white wheel. I like to tilt the platform down and sharpen the scrapers upside down. We'll set that angle that guy in a little closer. There we go. And now, depending on what shape of scraper you're sharpening, it's just a simple matter of either uh, touching it straight on if it's a square scraper. Uh, this one's a little bowl nose uh, bowl scraper. It has a little radius on it, so I'm gonna rock the tool left and right, making sure I keep pressure down onto the platform because I wanna make sure that that angle stays the same. There we go. That's all there is with sharpening scrapers. Now by sharpening it upside down, that wheel is actually dragging a 
much coarser burr off, in my opinion, uh, than if you were gonna sharpen it facing up. Uh, so that's gonna cut nice and smooth, and it's pretty fast to sharpen. Now the same thing would go with a square scraper or a box scraper like this, uh, but with a straight cutting edge, you're just going to keep the scraper square and slide left and right against the stone. Now the final tool that I uh, sharpen, there are a couple here I don't really sharpen, um, like the mate tool has a little round cutter that's just replaceable, so don't worry about that one, uh, is this guy. This is a skew chisel. Now. Most of the time, I don't actually sharpen this one on the grinder. Now you can, and you can set up the platform like this, and then you can just touch the edge along the stone. And in fact, that's the way a lot of production turners, even today, sharpen their skew chisel. They'll use a very coarse stone, maybe a 60 grit stone, and they'll just sharpen it either by hand or off of uh, the angled platform. Uh, but I like the style that Jimmy Clues does, where he actually takes this guy to a belt grinder. Uh, and I've done that here already. And he rounds over this profile. So this cutting edge, instead of having two square bevels, the entire thing is rounded. And what that does is as you're using the skew chisel, the chisel wants to push itself out of the cut. And it helps reduce any catches. Uh, because if you've ever used a skew chisel, you know it's a catch machine uh, if you don't uh, present the tool perfectly. So adding that little spear point profile uh, to the cross section of the tool really helps. And then what I do with this is I actually sharpen it on oil stones. Uh, so it's just a traditional um, chisel at that point that I'm sharpening on my oil stones, uh, working from coarse grit to my finest. And I found that that covers almost everything I need this for. If I do uh, come up with an instance where I want to use this guy as a scraper, um, which the skew works very well as a scraper. I will come over here and touch it on the stone uh, just to get a fresh edge uh, on the grinding stone if I need it. But most of the time, if I'm doing planing cuts, uh, I like to use oil stones on it. So it's a simple way to get sh your turning tools sharp, uh, a good jig system, a quality grinder with good stones, and a little bit of practice, and I'll have you turning nice fluffy shavings in no time.